So now that we know what molecular vibrations look like, uh, we can t talk about how we measure them. Um, so this is vibrational spectroscopy. Typically, what we mean is we're talking about IR spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, and Raman spectroscopy. These are two methods of measuring vibrational motion in molecules, um, the energies of your different vibrations. Um, they do measure slightly different to, uh, in different manners. The, the setup is different. And they also measure sometimes different vibrations themselves, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so typically, vibrational motions come in the area of 10 to 2, 10 to the 4 wave number. So wave number, of course, is, an, is a unit of energy. Um, so it's not a unit of distance. Um, in comparison, if we're talking about, so this is vibrational motion. If we talk about rotational motion, these are lower energy. So this is between wave number and then electronic transitions, which you use with UEVs, electronic transitions. So this is with light. These are often much higher in energy from 10 to the 4 through 10 to the 6 wave number. So these are two, uh, three different scales. So vibrational, of course, is somewhat in between. But this is sort of low energy compared to UV-Vis. So we measure them with IR. So let's talk about the difference between IR and Raman spectroscopy. So IR spectroscopy is a type of absorption spectroscopy. So you have some input light. So this is our I0 at some frequency. And so this energy of the light will be in the infrared region. And then you have your sample. So you might have done this in some sort of you know, uh, KBR pellet or some windows or in solution or a neutral mole. And then after that, after the light gets absorbed by your sample, then you get to some intensity that comes out. And so you measure the ratio between the intensity that comes out at that wavelength versus what you come in. And right, this is the Beer's law. You get absorption, or you can plot IR in transmission. And so your data will look like here. So here's my peak in absorbance. And this is going to be your wave number of your vibration. And what this is measuring directly is if we have, here's my curve. And then so we have our different vibrational energy levels. And then so you have equal 0. And so the light coming in is going to measure, is going to excite uh, to, from our different vibrational levels. And that, that's what gets absorbed. So that's what we're looking at, this, this difference here. So this is IR spectroscopy. Um, it's pretty similar in terms of setup to UV-Vis. So again, your incoming beam, and you measure what's not absorbed. OK, so Raman is different. So Raman is a scattering technique. So let me do this in pink. Here's Raman spectroscopy, and then so scattering. So what this is is that instead of going kind of like through one beam, here's your sample. And then here you have your beam of light at frequency. And then usually this is a laser. So this is some sort of laser. And often in Raman microscopes, these are in the visible. So visible light. And so this is going to be much higher energy than the transition. So it's not that we're not directly exciting between transitions. What happens instead is that we measure light that's scattered off. So this is scattered light. So this is a perpendicular measurement. So sometimes you'll get Rayleigh scattering. And then so this is going to be the same energy as what your incoming light. So this is the Rayleigh. But other times, you'll get out scattered light here. That's at a different energy. And then so this will be your incoming light plus or minus our vibrational modes. And the way this works, so this is our, our Raman scattering. So the way this works is here, again, we have like our nu equals 0, nu equals 1, our vibrational levels. So the way Raman scattering light it works is the light comes in. It's higher energy than this. So it's going to go up here. And then this is going to what's called a virtual state virtual state. And then once it scatters back down, if it drops back to this v equals 1 level, then this scattered light is going to be v minus, or I guess nu minus nu i. So th this spacing is what we're going to call nu i. 
And then sometimes you could also scatter this way. We could to this like a different virtual state. Let's go here. We could go here's our new, and then we might scatter back down, and this will be new plus new i. So what you're going to see in the wrong room is here's my data, here's energy. So here is going to be the energy, so this is all in energy. This is in, uh, this will be energy of the new, so this is just like a kind of our zero, uh, our laser points. So you'll get a big peak here, it's from the it's a Rayleigh scattering. And then what you'll see are our Raman peaks, that like this, where we have other signals that have a change that are shifted from our thing, and that's based on this difference is going to be our vibrational mode energy. So we take the difference in these peaks in the shifting, and we can get out we can get our vibrational levels through these uh, distance and difference or the differences in where these energies are. Um, we can get higher energy peaks, which are from this pink one. We can get lower energy peaks, which are from this kind of green scattering. So selection rules, um, so we use both of these techniques if we're measuring molecules. Um, and the reason is um, they have different selection rules. So what vibrational modes they'll see. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in the next video, but I just want to write it down here and then we'll explain what it is in the next one. So, okay, IR. Okay, so a vibration is IR active. A vibration is IR active. Um, if the dipole moment changes, changes um, during the vibration. So uh, realistically speaking, when you're looking at your normal modes with your irreducible representations, if the normal mode um, in that right-hand column of the character table has um, goes as x, y, or z, then it's going to be IR active. So it's going to be here's our irrep transforms as x, y, or z, and then a vibration will be Raman active. Um, this is if it's polarizable. So. This is kind of like the, we're not going to go into the details of what this means, but uh, kind of briefly, the, the, your laser beam comes in, has an electric field. So if the molecule is polarizable, it can induce a dipole moment, and then that causes the scattering. So um, a mode is Raman active if your irrep transforms as a square function. So we're talking like xy, yz, xz x squared, y squared, z squared. So um, there could be vibrations that are neither IR nor Raman active, and there could be modes that are both IR and Raman active. Um, there is one rule about the, I think the, it's called the exclusivity rule, um, which is that if your molecule has an inversion center, however, then your, I, there are no modes that are both IR and Raman active. And that has to do with just the the garada ungarada nature of x, y, z versus x squared, y squared, z squared. Um, so we'll do a practice example in class about how to know when modes are IR or Raman active.